Hey everyone, welcome to It Tastes Different Gaming Appetizers. What are we talking about this time? Well, the Game Awards uh, 2023 just happened, so we're going to go over um, some of that information, mainly right now, just who won what, right? All the winners that happened at the Game Awards, so we'll start from the bottom and go to the top, top being Game of the Year. I think we all know what won Game of the Year, but in case you don't... Um, so starting off, there was some esports things that won. Um, for whoever cares about esports, you can go look at stuff up. Because uh, uh, I don't care, and I don't know any of these esports teams, coaches, athletes. Don't know any of them. I could tell you what the best esports game was. It was Valorant. Um, but as far as all this other stuff, I don't follow esports. So sorry. Uh, content creator of the year was Iron Mouse. Have no clue who that is. So good for them. Uh, most anticipated game, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, I think I think when I voted, because I did, I did do voting, and I did vote for the esports stuff, even though I didn't know who the hell anybody was. So I don't know what I picked. But I do know most anticipated game, I think I picked Final Fantasy for that. Uh, best adaptation. So this is a game to movie or or a cartoon or whatever the case may be. Um, was uh, Last of Us, which is kind of a given there. I never did watch the. Uh, I didn't actually all the adaptations they had uh, up for uh, possibly winning. I didn't watch a single one, but I know Shane has and Pat. If he was here, I know he has watched some of that stuff. So, uh, but I I I hadn't watched any of it. Uh, best multiplayer presented by Discord. That was Baldur's Gate 3. Best sports and racing game, Forza Motorsport. Best sim slash strategy game was Pikmin 4, which I think I voted for. And I think I voted for Forza as the best uh, sports racing. Best family game was Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I don't remember what I voted for there, but glad Wonder won. It's a great game. Uh, best fighting game, Street Fighter 6. So good for Street Fighter. Street Fighter 6 was really good. Uh, best RPG was Baldur's Gate 3. This is the uh, category that Starfield was in. Starfield did not win. Um, best action adventure game, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Best action game, Armored Core 6. Best VR AR game was Resident Evil Village VR mode, which I was really surprised. I figured uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain would have won. Um, and not like a a VR mode tacked onto Resident Evil. I have played some of the VR modes that are tacked on the Resident Evil and they work really well and they're really good, but I mean, it's, I don't know, it's, it's an already existing game that you're just tacking a VR mode onto, right? So it's like, eh, but whatever. Good for Resident Evil, I guess. Uh, best mobile game was Honkai Star Rail, which, yippee skippy. Uh, best debut indie game was Cocoon. I haven't played Cocoon. I know it's on Game Pass. Uh, I do have it downloaded. I know Pat's played it. He said it was pretty good, uh, but I have not played it yet. I have it downloaded and, and ready to play. Just got to find some time to actually play it. Uh, best independent game was Sea of Stars. Good for Sea of Stars. I love that game. So glad it got you know an award for something uh, and best independent. And we noticed last night when they did best independent game that Dave the Diver was not on that list anymore, which it originally was. So good thing they took that off because even the people that made dave the diver kind of called out saying hey we're not an independent studio you know the game may look independent as far as visually and stuff but it, you know we're like a we're a pretty big studio with lots of money so you know maybe don't put us in there as an independent game because you know kind of give it to the people that are independent um best community support was boulders gate 3 Best ongoing game was Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I, I don't know. I, I thought there was better options for this one. Now, again, this is all like, you know, uh, people voting for stuff. But I mean, like, the best ongoing game, Cyberpunk, it's like, it's more like they should have created a category of best game that we released, broken, that we fixed. You know, they could put Cyberpunk in there. They could put No Man's Sky in there. Right. They could put some uh, other games that, you know, came out and were in bad shape, but then eventually turned themselves around because Cyberpunk now is a really great game. Cyberpunk, when it released, 
was an okay game, but there was a lot of things that needed working on it. And, you know, so, you know, what has it been like three years or however long later? It's finally, uh, I would say, you know, if anybody said, hey, should I play Cyberpunk that's never played it before? I would say, yeah, it's a great game. You should definitely check it out. But back then, when it first released, it was kind of like, eh, if you want to play it, I guess. I mean, I beat it back then. And, you know, like again, it was serviceable, meaning you could play it and, and complete it. But it had a lot of issues that needed to be resolved. So I don't know if I'd put it on ongoing game. When I think of ongoing game, I think of a game that's complete, that they continue to support and work on and improve. Right. Not a game that's completely broken and they're like, oh, crap we better fix this or this is going to look bad for us type of thing. Right. And that's how I feel like cyberpunk is and like, like Redfall and no man's sky and, you know, various games that come out and they're like completely trash and broken. And, and eventually they become, I don't know about Redfall, but they eventually become really good games that people enjoy. Right. And, and I guess they are supporting them, but in the sense, it's almost kind of like, I don't know, for me, it feels like, you're kind of obligated to support it, right? Because you promised all these things that the game did not deliver on uh, when it released. So it's kind of like, you know, you should be supporting it <laughs> uh, and, and making it into the game that you want it to be, right? Or what you said it was going to be. Um, games for Impact was uh, Tachia, Takia, Kakdaka, I don't know, Tia. Tachia, I, I played the game um, for about 30 minutes or so. It's it's an interesting game, but it's not really my thing. But uh, I know a lot of people liked it and stuff. I did play it a little bit. Um, innovation and accessibility was Forza Motorsport, which I do remember voting for that because I know there's a ton of accessibility options in Forza Motorsport. Uh, best performance was Neil Newborn, uh, uh, which was Asterian who played Asterian in uh, Baldur's Gate 3. He did a great job, so, you know, kudos to him. Uh, best audio design went to Hi-Fi Rush, which, cool. Uh, best score in music went to Final Fantasy 16. You know, Final Fantasy 16 had some good music. Uh, best art direction went to Alan Wake 2. Best narrative went to Alan Wake 2. Best game direction went to Alan Wake 2. Player's voice went to Baldur's Gate 3. And the game of the year went to Baldur's Gate 3. So there were a few games that didn't, that, that uh, Spider-Man 2, for example, had seven nominations and did not win a single one. Um, Starfield only had one nomination, Best RPG, and did not win that. Um, and there were some other games that did not win any nominations as well. Uh, it was really... I think uh, Alan Wake and Baldur's Gate 3 were the two that took away, that took the most awards. Uh, I was surprised that Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom only got one. They only won Best Action Adventure, and that was it. They didn't win anything else. I don't remember how many nominations they had. I know they were in Game of the Year, um, Best Action Adventure game, and I'm not sure if they were in other ones, but I could have swore they were in some other ones, but um, they didn't win those either. So those are the winners. Um, you know, we, the the other thing too is we had a lot of good games this year you know we had a lot of games that came out this year that were really good especially towards the end of the year you know this last half of 2023 had some real bangers that came out um so uh you know even though it didn't win an award you know spider-man 2 a lot of people really like that one uh, alan wake 2 Baldur's gate 3 uh you know uh, armored core 6 which did win one award uh you know, Street Fighter Six, Mar Super Mario's Wonder, uh, that did win some awards as well. But there was a lot of games that won uh, maybe one or two awards here, or maybe didn't win any awards. But you know, uh, there was a lot of great games this year. So, uh, Shane, what did you think of the winners and uh, and this whole this whole thing? I think overall, I would agree with. Um majority uh, of those uh, choices um game of the year definitely would mine would be alan wake two or Baldur's gate three so like that's kind of a tie for me uh player's voice i think that makes sense because Baldur's gate three was released the way a game should be released hint hint wink wink 
Um, but, you know, there was a few surprises. Hi-Fi Rush, even being on the list for anything, was kind of a shock. Uh, it got uh, Best Audio Design. I don't remember if it was nominated for anything else. But, I mean, that that was a game that was, uh, you know, boom, here, here's a game. There you go. And it was a good game, damn good game. Uh, pretty, it was fun, but, you know, it kind of came in and went out. I mean, because it, it just wasn't a big AAA game. But I was kind of surprised to see that on the list for anything. Um, you know, there's there really wasn't a whole lot of surprises because certain things really should have won. I agree with you on the VR. Uh, Resident Evil Village shouldn't have been on there, period. Uh, it's it's an old game too, so it it really shouldn't have been there. Uh, Legend of Zelda, I'm really surprised I didn't win more. Um, I I think Super Mario Wonder is definitely in the top tier because I I just adore that game so much. Best family game. I haven't played it with my family yet. Uh, I don't like them that much. You know, Nick's my family, so sorry, kids. Uh, but it is a phenomenal game. It is definitely one to check out. It is in my game of the year. Uh, it was my game of the year. So, but Street Fighter Six being, I, I would have went with uh, personally. I would have went with uh, Mortal Kombat One. Just me, even though I love Street Fighter Six. I think they did a tremendous job with this one. They did so many new and unique things. Uh, Best adaptation, Last of Us. I think that's kind of a given because Mario is animated as it is. Uh, for so when they came out with an animated movie, you know it just makes sense. I mean, it's not like we had a live action Chris Pratt Mario movie. Thank freaking God. Um, but the Last of Us adaptation was uh, was beautiful. It was wonderful. It uh, it was dedicated. It was. I mean, there was a lot of passion into that series that season so let's see if they keep it up um, other than that i don't really have any big disagreements i think most everything is uh where i would put it or tied with something i would put there uh spider-man 2 not receiving bubkiss was a surprise uh sony usually does pretty well with their with their first party games and I really enjoyed Spider-Man 2. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but it was a damn good game. It was fun. It was interesting. Great story. Great characters. And it didn't win Bupkis. So that's probably my only real big shock of this, this award show. Now, the award show itself was fine. Jeff Keighley, you let me down for the second year in a row, though, you bastard. You didn't wear a fugly coat. You've always worn a fugly coat. Last year, you didn't wear a fugly coat. It was almost normal. This year, you didn't wear a fugly coat. It was almost normal. Don't disappoint me next year, Jeff. I'll knock an F out of your name. But I think overall, I think the the awards are pretty much where they should be with the nominations. There are probably a few things I would have slipped into certain groups. Um, you know, uh, Microsoft was basically nowhere to be found in anything which kind of upset pat because he was really wanting starfield to be in there uh a little more often uh but you know the people have spoken and by the people i mean the people with the wallets so but but it's uh it was an interesting show um i can't wait to talk about the uh upcoming uh uh video we're going to talk about the announcements that i'm really excited for too because it was pretty big it was pretty heavy on announcements so i can't wait for that stay tuned yeah stay tuned yeah yeah the show was uh not bad overall um i think i know christopher judge <laughs> last year uh went too long in his speech and so this year i think this year one thing they messed up on though is they didn't give enough of people enough time to do one like it's fine i mean it because it was like you know they would nominate someone for something hours, they would right? come up yeah they would nominate something the person would come up grab the trophy and they would start speaking about like it felt like 30 seconds later they're like trying to play them off the stage and it's like okay well i mean the christopher judge like almost eight minute speech is overdoing it but 30 seconds is a little too short like give them a little bit more time to be able to say what they want to say like most people you know 
until Christopher Judge had that eight minute speech, uh, we really didn't have a problem with people going up and talking about, you know, who they wanted to think and stuff like that, because they usually kept it short. Right. So it's like, that's fine if you want to play people off, but give them enough time, Jeff Keighley, to, to, to thank the people that they want to thank, um, you know, their team and their loved ones and stuff like that. I felt like it was a little too short um, on people trying to give their acceptance speeches right up there. Um, I, you know, I don't like a long speech either, but, you know, they just won an award. Like, give them a little bit more time to do their, to do their talk, right? So, but, um, yeah, I'm, I was really surprised. Um, I guess, I don't know, like I said, I was surprised with some of the winners on here, but, you know, overall, I, I'm just glad for game of the year. It was either Boulder's Gate or Alan Wake. Uh, Alan Wake was my game of the year, but uh, I was okay with uh, Boulder's Gate winning because I love that game too. So one of those two is the one, the two that I wanted to win game of the year. And I assumed Boulder's Gate would win it, but you know, and they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, one, uh, it's not a big complaint, but it's more of an annoyance. Uh, the young lady who did the beginning stuff, Sydney Goodman, uh, please make her stop. Uh, She's there this, every year, man. <laughs> She's there every year. Whoever is doing the writing for her, make them stop. Because I can't imagine she's that unfunny in real life. I can't. (laughs) Because nobody can be that unfunny in real life. It has to be a bad writer. So make that writer go away. Because she just was Or maybe she's not good at the punchline. You know, the delivery. She's not good at the delivery. Uh, Then she needs to try DiGiorno's because she's failing miserably (laughs) up there. So I, I, I yeah. you know, she may be very knowledgeable in the video games and video game industry. She, she's very attractive, but she, she's not funny. Not, not funny. None. I mean, yeah. None. Well, no. I mean, she's there every but, year. I'm sure she'll be there next year too. So then make her writer go away. <laughs> Maybe they do need a better writer. Um, that was, that was the most, uh, I mean, it was cringy. The, the okay. jokes trying to be pulled out. <laughs> right i mean and here's the other thing too right and, and this is the thing that just annoys me about jeff Keeley. not necessarily the game awards i know jeff Keeley has such a hard on for hito kojima but seriously unless you have something to actually show us don't trot him out and talk about the od great i'm glad they're <laughs> they're 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 making a game with xbox and it looks It doesn't look like anything. I don't watching the trailer. I didn't get the sense of like, oh, my gosh, it was a sense of I have no freaking clue what I'm watching and them coming out and talking about it. Even with Jordan Peele is going to be working with him in some form or fashion. Still no clue. Great. That's fantastic. (laughs) It'll probably be like 20 years down the freaking line before this game ever sees the light of day. I don't care. I don't care. (sighs) I mean, Jeff Keighley, oh, like, so hilarious. kisses the ground that he walks on. I swear to God. Like, oh, he's coming out here to tell us about something. To tell us, Hino Kojima, uh, I'm making a game. Oh, my God. And it's like, oh, my God, dude. Seriously, go you two, go get a room real quick. Seriously. Unless he's got something to actually show us, don't put him in the show. I love Hino Kojima, but don't put him in the show. Like, that little teaser trailer of OD tells me jack shit about what the hell he's making half the time. I don't know what the hell he's making half the time. I think Haji Kojima doesn't even know what he's making. So wait till you got something substantial to show us and then bring him out there and show him. But I swear it's like, please stop doing that. Don't bring him next, next year. And he's like, Oh, he's still working on that game. Here's another, here's the extended version of that trailer. The girl screams yep. twice. Uh, or the I'm, guy I'm screams this one jokes. i don't know it's like <laughs> it's like uh, the, the, it's like the, the deal with kojima <laughs> is his games take forever to come out Death Stranding, they when do. it was first announced it was years and that's one thing i think as a gaming community in a whole freaking hates when you announce something and it doesn't see the light of day for five to eight years don't do right. that shit just stop that 
And Kojima and plus, is Death one Stranding. of the worst about it. And plus, Death Stranding was an okay game. It wasn't like... I wouldn't give it that. <laughs> I, it wasn't like the best game ever made. Like, I know Kojima has made some, you know, the Metal Gear series and stuff that's really good and stuff like that. But, you know, his first foray into independent gaming was Death Stranding, which was an okay game. It had its moments that were really good. And then it had other moments that were not like it was just okay. Um, you know, I beat the game, so I enjoyed it, I guess, that much. Uh, like I said, it had some pretty cool parts, but, you know, I wouldn't call it like, you know, I wasn't calling up my friends saying you must play this game or anything. Like, I was like, yeah, that's neat. Um, you know, it, it's just it was an OK game. So I don't have regardless of what Kojima is making. Again. Like Kojima made some really good Metal Gear games, but since then, since going independent, leaving K- Konami and stuff, he really hasn't made anything that's been like jaw dropping. Like, oh my god, um, you know, he's only made one game, Death Stranding. So it's like, I know he's a he's a great developer, a great producer of games and stuff like that. But you've got to you got to have receipts. You got to show me what you can create because Death Stranding, if that's the best you got then your best is just okay. All right. So <laughs> I know you can do better than that. So show me, I mean, you're making death stranding too. I don't know why, but you are. Um, hopefully it's better than death stranding. Cause like I said, there were good bits of death stranding when you were fighting the BTs and going through that area. It was very tense. It was really cool, but delivering packages, that part was very repetitive and mind numbing. Right. So. You had some uh, good spots got, and you had some things that weren't. I've already got the uh, tagline for the for the sequel when it comes out. Death Stranding 2, the Uber Eats of video games. <laughs> right. And then I'm looking forward to, to seeing more of OD. Oh. I am. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to create with this game with Jordan Peele and all that stuff and using the uh, Xbox's cloud system for whatever he's going to use it for. Uh, I don't know, external storage or something. I'm not sure. But whatever he's using it for, I, I'm excited to see what he comes up with. But again, you know, I know Jeff Key likes and hit Kojima and all that stuff. And everybody's excited when Kojima comes out on stage. But seriously, don't trot him out there to talk about something that isn't going to tell the gaming community anything about anything. You're working on a game. Well, no shit. We already knew that That's part. Like, that'd be like me going out on uh, Twitter. Yeah, it's called Twitter, not X. It'd be like me going out on Twitter going, I'm playing a game. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. Right, we already knew Kojima was making a game with Xbox. So that wasn't a surprise. Two years. The biggest surprise was what the name of the game was. Other than that, the 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 video that they showed, and supposedly, I guess that's, I guess the video was CG and not just real. I mean, it was real people acting like motion capture, um, I guess. But the the actual like it them on the screen, was CG. it looked really good. It looked really good uh, visually. Uh, but it's like, again, it doesn't girl, tell me anything. Yeah. The and then it was the old from, man. It was in it. The old man is from, if I remember correctly, he was from uh, uh, where they sewed your face to the other dude's sphincter hole and then they said yeah, another human dude centipede in there. human centipede i believe he was the, the weirdo doctor in there i don't know who the other lady was mm. so or was it's he obviously the gonna guy? tend towards a horror no he was wasn't that a the different guy. dude that's a different guy okay. different different old different twisted old white guy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but you know but, so the I game mean, will I'm have sure... a horror appeal obviously yeah yeah, obviously. I mean, it's got Jordan which, Peele in there, so which I am perfectly happy with because yeah, what Kojima did with PT, um, right, you right. know the uh, not alone in the dark, but uh, Silent Hill thing yeah. he was trying to do was freaking right. mind blowing. I mean, it was yeah, it was really it cool. was everything you would want out of a scary game. So, um, yeah, it's just it's too. Too soon. He premature he prematurely uh Kojima'd himself. So you can't do that. Right. You can't prematurely co- Kojima. It, it's you know, right. see a doctor. 
Right. Yeah, and that's 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 my biggest gripe. It's like don't don't it's cool to have Kojima on stage and everything like that to talk about something if he's really got something to show us. But, you know, right now I feel like you really didn't have anything to show us. And this game is probably very far away from being ever released or or more shown about it. Right. Um, you know, because they talked about what was it last year, the year before last Death Stranding 2. And we haven't heard anything about that game since then. Right. We yeah, haven't seen think anything. You heard something. Haven't heard anymore. Yeah. When he came out last night, I thought he was going to talk about Death Stranding 2, because that was the last thing he had yeah. really shown off and talked about, right? Um, mm -hmm. We knew they were doing something with uh, Xbox. That was already known. Uh, yeah. So I thought he was going to just talk about that, but it was kind of interesting that he talked about the Xbox game, and, and it's like, okay, well, where's Death Stranding 2? Not that I'm, like, you know, chomping at the bit <laughs> to play it, but, like, you know, let's, let's do one thing at a time here. Yeah, it's it's definitely surprising that he brought out odd OD, however you want to call it. Did he call it OD or did he call it odd? I don't remember. It was OD, like OD. overdose. Okay. Uh, like Which I assume OD. is going to be like the name of it or something like that, or the 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 uh, idea behind it. But I don't know. Yeah. Well. Uh, so I I'm sure it'll good. be pretty cool. Yeah, I hope it's good. I'm sure it'll be pretty cool. I like to see more, but I just know that it's going to be years before we see any more about this game. I just know it. So don't trot them out early. Um, but they had some other stuff that they showed off, but which we'll go over in the nomination or the uh, the announcements. Uh, but as far as the nominations, as far as the uh, awards winners um, and the show overall, do you have anything else you want to add to this, Shane? I think we're all winners this year. <laughs> You're all winners. That reminds me of the Seinfeld episode. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies watching the, the 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 marathon, and she's like, "You're all winners." <laughs> oh my God! The world gets uh, a trophy. <laughs> yeah, everybody gets a participation trophy. I was, but, yeah. I mean, I think the I think the Game Awards this time around, you know. You don't have to, again, uh, I think give a little bit more time for acceptance speeches. I think um, you can cut back on the celebrities. Uh, Matthew McConaughey was there, which is fine because he's apparently making or part of a game in some form or yes. fashion. Uh, at the end, doing the uh, uh, doing the game of the year announcement was, uh, what's his face, from I, Dune. Uh, whatever his name is. I, I, the I Dune, he looks the Dune guy. I can't remember his name. Anyway, uh, oh Timothy uh, Chalamet, that's who it was. Uh, and I have no freaking re I have no freaking clue why he's even there. Like, you know, because he it, looks like an evil villain game character with his face. I don't. I mean, they they. I have. I I don't know him. You know, of course, personally or anything. But I mean, like they for the game of the year person, they brought out the most like, um, melancholy dude. You know, he's like. I'm doing the game of the year, and it's like, mm. <laughs> but it's like, okay, come on, man, a little bit more. Put some of that acting cleared. chops in there. Yeah. It's like you know, yes. we don't need all that. We don't need all the celebrities Pretend. and stuff like that. <laughs> although right? we don't although, need all the celebrities and stuff like that. We did get one celebrity we were all wanting, Flute Man. That's right, Flute Man. Flute Guy was back. Guitar girl, I didn't see there. She might have been in the back. I did see a girl with a guitar, but I don't remember if that was a guitar girl or not. But flute guy they gave her. He definitely yeah, performed. Girl. He performed his ass off. He played guitar every flute known to man. <laughs> <laughs> and he did flute too. Guy played every flute known to man. <laughs> he had a whole flute bonanza. He had big flutes to small flutes. He even played big it all. Flute, little flute, tall flute. I small hope they flute. bring him back every year. Because I enjoy watching Flute Guy go on. Uh, they also had uh, the Alan Wake 2, uh, uh, Gods of Asgard. Old, old Gods of Asgard. Old Gods of Asgard. Yep. Yep. Doing uh, with all the, with uh, uh, Warland Door and, and uh, uh, Alan Wake, the voice, as well as Alan Wake, the actor, and everything like that. If you haven't played Alan Wake 2, I'd recommend going and playing it. It's a great game. Uh, but they had that whole, uh, musical number there not the whole song but it was you know the cut down version 
Um, but it was great. You know, it was great. I was hoping they would do that there and they did. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, cut back on the celebrity endorsements. We don't need a bunch of celebrities in here. I mean, this is this is an award show for the gamers as well as for the developers, right? Um, so have developer presenters and and presenters that uh from different uh gaming uh development studios and stuff like that coming out and presenting things right among their peers right i mean it would be weird to watch like the, the the movie awards and then like uh uh fucking hiro kojima comes out there and gives the best picture award right and he hasn't made a movie or something right i mean it's like that's just the weirdest thing ever right to have someone like that come out there and be like and the best you know it's like no let's, let's keep everybody in their lane right we don't need uh all these uh, celebrities. And I know why Jeff Keighley's doing it, right? He's doing it to get more, more eyes on, you know, by having these big celebrities in there, but you know, that's not what the game awards are. We, we have stuff for that. It's called everything else. So, um, you know, keep these for, for just the gamers and the developers and, and, uh, and, and all the people that, you know, develop and do the artistry and, and everything that the thing that we're sending, we're here to celebrate, is the industry and though and the people who bring our uh the games that we love to play uh to life right and we're there to celebrate them and the the achievements that they have uh done for that year right and that that should work that should be where it uh remains but um anything else you want to add to this shane i know i said no. that before but i mean it this time no no i'm, no? I'm good i'm good i think we covered all the bases uh no yeah. unfunny writers. Um, no Kojima, unless he's got a gameplay to show. Um, more uh, Warren Door. Uh, more flute guy. And uh, street, keep it streamlined. I have to say, I like the streamlinedness of this year, but I agree. The presenters should have had a few, you know, another minute to talk, you know, because right. game development is a lot of people. So let, let right. them get exactly. as many thanks as they can. Yeah, they don't need to go Christopher Judge length, but you know, give them like a couple of minutes to, to at least you know, I don't, I wouldn't mind if it was two minutes to to go through what they wanted to do. I mean, that's that's a little long, but I mean, most people would keep it shorter than that, more than likely, right? Because that's how mostly it went. It usually was like maybe a minute at most, uh, but it seemed like thirty seconds or twenty seconds. By the time they got up there, grabbed the award, and go, wow, this is heavy. The music's like me, you know. <laughs> I was like, geez, come on, like slow it down a little bit. Tell that orchestra yeah. to, to to relax. Chill. Flute man ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but before we go, make sure if you're listening to this, make sure you go watch the Christopher Judge joke on Call of Duty. It was freaking hilarious. It caught me off guard. Super proud of him. <laughs> yeah, that was at the very beginning of the awards. It was pretty funny. Um, but Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Let us know down in the comments below. Were you okay with the winners? You know, uh, was there any category that you wish something else was nominated for or would have won? Uh, let us know down in the comments below. And, and you know, if there's anything in the Game Awards that you would like to see changed, you know, let us know. Um, I would be very interested to see, you know, what, what, what everybody thinks about the Game Awards this year. But other than that, thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video if you liked it. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Help us out. Do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification to stay up to date with new videos that we do all the time. We'll see you next time. See ya.